Hey guys, what's up? Alright, 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 it's Double Deuce back. Today we're going to go over a couple of things before I start the build on the new system for cylinder. Um, one thing that I um, that I wanted to pass on to you guys, and it was a really cool thing <clears throat> that Gary Conley taught me. Um, just over a couple of phone conversations and all that stuff. And you've probably seen it because he did mention it in one of, one of his videos. Um, if you see the video of the Gary Conley um, Precision Engine Shop Tour, um, he shows you how he balances a crankshaft. <clears throat> now, this here, just a simple piece of aluminum with two razor blades on it, okay? Now, what I do is, this is an L400 crankshaft. This is one of their latest versions, um, it, which really passed the test. I was really surprised. But when you put it in the center, what happens? You see what happens? The heavy weight goes to the bottom. So that tells me when you when I see a crankshaft like this, <clears throat> even if I turn it this way, it still rolls back to the heavy spot on the bottom. So that means that if you want to balance this crankshaft, you need to do a flywheel or something on the front. A harmonic balancer and the flywheel on the back needs to have either a weight on one side or weight taken out of the other. Um, so it's not that bad. Um, the other ones wouldn't even roll like this. This at least rocks back and forth. <clears throat> now what happens is, this causes all kinds of havoc. When this thing's out of balance like that, it just starts doing this, you know. Now, this is a new Sisson crankshaft, okay. Now, one thing I wanted to compare was, <clears throat> for one, it's a lot smaller. So the Sisson um, 175 is a lot smaller. So this could actually... Um, I did mention that it could fit into a um, like a 1 6 scale, but I'm thinking this this would be perfect for like a 1 8 scale. You, you could squeeze it in a 1 10. And I'm still going to try to put this in the bruiser frame because I still have one Tamiya bruiser frame and complete setup that I've always wanted to build something cool with. I might do that with this one. Um, so. And we're going to get to the size comparison of the L400 with the new Sisson 175. But back to the crankshaft. Watch what happens now when I put this on here. It just it just rolls freely. It'll roll right off the razor blades. That means that this thing has been thoroughly checked and balanced. So, <clears throat> there should be very little vibration in this. Very little. And when you roll it across the table, it likes to roll. It just keeps rolling, you know what I mean? That's on a flat surface. And you see it just keeps going from lobe to lobe. Now when you try the, the L400 one, the lobes on the top are too thin. You notice the difference of the journals on these things see how wide these are up here and how they got them shaved and if you look at these they're very thin right here so you know all this comes to play with balancing an engine so if you're gonna build something like this just be careful you don't cut yourself okay because uh, Usually I hot glue these things on here, but I learned one time after I sliced my hand open reaching for something one time That it's not cool So when you're done balancing your crank Immediately take the razor blades off this thing and tape them back to the plate and then put it away Now this is something <clears throat> I was sitting there messing with last night Because um, I was going through the kit and all that stuff and 175. Now I'm going to put the oil pan on backwards so it'll balance because it really goes this way. But I, I just want to balance this out for everybody. And whoop, let me 
grab the rest of the stuff. You will need a dial caliper to put this together. So you can buy them online, they're pretty cheap. That way there, um, you use them, I use them for basically measuring nuts, bolts, um, you know, but they suggest use one of these for your lifters when you adjust your lifters. Now this is your back plate. Put this on here like so. And snap right in with the rubber o-ring. Now, we already know the crankshaft's shorter. Okay, the crankshaft's just a little bit shorter. Probably, uh, I would say maybe 10 millimeters shorter just on the journals itself. Um, now, here's your L400. I'm going to set this up, and I want you guys to see. Even with the bell housing on the back of the 175, it's still going to be smaller than this. But with the head on here, it might be just a hair taller. But the cylinder head on this is kind of thick. Then it's got a, um, a valve cover on top of it. So this has the protruding water jacket on the top here, and um, but like I say, they're very comparable to the same size. Now I have put the uh, L400s in an eight scale setup there with my Jeep and all that stuff, and I've also put this into a fifth scale. Um, so my like I say, my next build is going to be whoop, is going to be that. Um, I'm glad, see, this is why the valves are numbered, they just fell out. Um, my next build is going to be something comparable with this, and this here will probably go back into something smaller, um, because of the RPM. And on the very back of these things here, if you've seen um, Steve's channel there from Black LA Mass, um, a bigger bearing back here would help too, because this is a new upgraded block that's got the bigger bearing in the front. Now, if they put a, the, the, his bearing disintegrated back here because I think the the oh the gear offset of the gears and stuff it was wearing on it, you know, so a lot of tension there. Um, but if you notice the new X Power, um, you know, the X Power L two hundred comes through goes directly into the transmission. There's no there's no spur gear to change on there, and now I know why they did that, because of the, um, the side tension on these things will wear the bearings down. So, anyway, I just want to point this out too. This email came in this morning. The VH are now in stock at Sterling Kit. So, I don't know how many they have, um, but if you, if you want to grab one now, they're in stock. So, there's no waiting. Um, it says it'll ship out the next day, I think. Let me see what it says here. Yep, it says here that um, they're, they, they're in, in stock because we've waited forever for this. And, um, but they will be sent out within one working day. So if you buy one, it'll be sent out. You won't have to wait and wait, wait, you know. Um, so everything's happening now. And it's kind of cool that it's going on. And uh, so I'm going to start the build with this according to assistance directions and I'm going to try to videotape each step and I'm not going to try to make it um, you know because you can blow like 40 hours you know filming something so I, what I want to do is keep it simple show the basic parts that you need from the parts bin and just kind of assemble them and then there will probably be some editing to that video but I want to do their direction step by step so you guys can see it too and um, I, I've been waiting for this engine for a long time. Um, like I say, my first thought was to take my Tamiya Bruiser and put this in there with the three-speed transmission. But it don't have the reverse, and their, their gearbox is very long. So, but I do have the three-speed with the reverse from Sterling Kit that I may um, retrofit in instead of the Tamiya three-speed. Because I know those don't take a lot of stress at all. I've, I've blown those up from time to time, you know. So, anyways, guys, I'm going to get around here. So, my next video will be the build on this. So, 
I hope you guys are having a good long weekend here, the 4th of July weekend. I'm going to go throw some burgers on the grill later as soon as it stops raining. Um, sit back, chill out, and just kind of do my thing. You know what I mean? So stay tuned for more, and I'll catch you later. Stay safe out there. Love to all, man. I'll catch you later. Adios.